Hello, Nick. Hey. What's up? Good evening, Nick. Good evening. Today is Wednesday. Yes. November 10th. November 9th, my dude. November 9th. Oh. November 9th. Sir. Yeah. I'm day. I'm day. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Term election. Holy United States of America. Yeah, I know, and you've been dying to talk to me about this, so what's what's Well, not, like, I paid attention to it. Did you pay attention to it at all throughout the day? Like, were you hearing it? No, not really. Did I just any type of news? Not really, to be honest with you. Apparently, one of the big storylines is, like, people our age, ages, basically, like, under 40. Terrible term. Really? Across the nation. Like, as far as, like, people, like... For Republicans. Ooh. Yeah. So... Big narrative for the midterms, but the polling that is going to be a pretty big shift, both the Senate and the House for the Republican Party. But it turns out that in a lot of states like Ohio, Illinois, Michigan, like North Carolina, we actually like lost House seats. Democrats weren't like projected. Like these wow. were incumbent Republicans. They beat. Yeah, incumbent you know, meaning like people. Person like, who was already in office. Right, right. They flipped those. You oh, weren't even expecting. Uh, Republicans have been forming like, seriously below average in states like Arizona. We lost yeah. Pennsylvania outright to John Fetterman. <laughs> That was the, that's for the, but for the house race, like, some notable Michigan. Yeah, I mean the main the main thing is we did the, the Democrats flip those those house seats. Yeah, and sort of like we're big. looking at like a maybe a, like a a narrow lead here, and the thing is we're relying on races. It's like California and New York. Like it looks like they're con- they're gonna come out. I'll read you that for California's 13th district. The Republicans are leading by 50.1 percent. Uh, Holy shit! That's and, such a and the ca- margin. and the Democrats are 49.9. So yeah. And for the Senate race, Georgia is gonna go into a runoff. So a runoff means that there isn't able to be a 50 percent majority. So it goes to like another. So in in uh, Georgia, Raphael Warnock, forty nine point four percent of the votes, and uh, Herschel Walker has forty eight point five percent. Either of them fifty, so they have. To. Oh shit! So they have to yeah. like redo. They have to recount. And this is like a fairly important midterm election, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in terms. All right, so the thing yeah. is. I see this as a loss for the Republicans. But the reality is, it looks like we're going to take the House by a narrow margin, which means if the Republicans have a House majority, it basically means policy making. They're not going to have a majority <laughs> to do a lot of the things that they want to do in their agenda. Um, but the thing is, the Republicans were also projected to take the Senate. We were, some people mm. said we were going to be up like 54, 53 seats. We're like hoping it would be a miracle if we got that, that, 50, that 51 split. Because the thing with the, the Senate is even if both sides were 50-50, Kamala Harris, the vice president, always gets deciding vote. That's the power of the vice president. So even if it's a 50-50 split, it still goes to, this, to Kamala Harris, which is where we are right now, currently, right. in the Senate. Kamala Harris is just... Plus, so Kamala Harris it is actually one of the most... She might be the most powerful person, technically, in Washington. 
despite being one of the most incompetent people. And this yeah. is people like she's in, you know, the category of like AOC and like who else? Like Biden, obviously. Yeah. Like it's just like like Biden's like you can just obviously just see like something's so you know not not right. Not in there. order for the Republicans to take the Senate, they're going to need to win that Georgia runoff. And they're going to need to win either Arizona and Nevada. Mm. They're definitely not going to win Arizona. And in Nevada, it's 49.9% for the Republicans and 47.2%. So, looking kind of good. Uh, but yeah, that's is what it is yeah so so how how like when when did you kind of start getting into politics i would say 2019 uh the first political candidate i actually got like really into was like am i close enough to the mic yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm just i'm just looking at to make sure first Mm -hmm. political candidate i got into was andrew yang which looking back at it now my politics have done almost a complete backflip from there Mm. but i would still like to consider like i would still like to think that i kept a lot of i don't know like outside thinking that andrew yang had andrew yang was the asian guy who ran on the universal basic income right and that was what 2020 yeah that was 2020 he was democrat he made it decently far he made it farther than kamala harris a lot further, actually. I think he was in top five. He really, you know, it started to go downhill after like, the Iowa caucus. Then it started going down like Bernie, Biden, and Buttigieg. Um, but yeah, he was the first guy I was really into. I was pretty into you guy. Yeah. I don't know. Cool idea. He claims that like if we just gave every American a thousand dollars a month. Like, they wouldn't waste it on average most of it mm. on, like, things they need. Which I actually, like, agree with. Most people, like, probably would. Like, either save that money or, like, you know, spend it on. But there's a lot of people that would spend it on dumb stuff. And there's yeah. some people that just don't need $1,000. Yeah, like, and I, but the I think... idea of every American, it's like, I get it, it's equal, but, like, Maybe, they don't need that. Maybe if you're making under a certain amount, right? Wouldn't that be a... But that's the thing. That's welfare. And we already have it. And it sucks. <laughs> so quickly, once you start to, like, dissect UBI... Because it would be very expensive. Right. And it's just, like, maybe in... If we are in a universe where the United States is not in as, as much debt as it is... Or we don't spend as much. Maybe we can do some type of UBI. Not now. <laughs> Not in this economy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, the, like, things are getting scary, dude. And it's Honestly. tough, because, like, Andrew Yang, like, I'm sorry, but if you think that UBI is going to be a winner right now, unfortunately. Yeah, like, although the idea... Sounds great, like getting a thousand dollars um extra a month sounds awesome. Yeah. It's just like <clears throat> unfortunately it's very unrealistic. And the thing is and it's is just like, gonna cause a bunch of inflation. We've yeah. But we've also already seen what UBI does. Like we did it pandemic mm-hmm. with the stimulus checks. Yep. And most people just like saved that money. Which is great, like they saved that money, but the argument of oh but that money's just gonna go back into the economy. For realsies, we're just gonna make money giving people like oop. Really you could say like, well, people weren't allowed to go back to the you know, the stores and stuff. It was like, yeah, during twenty twenty. Twenty one, you're still doing the stimulus. The economy still wasn't doing that great. But yeah. the government was also passing a bunch of really bad, you know, bills. Uh Infrastructure bill, the inflation bill, all these things. 
Yeah, they had like what? What is like the one that they the reduce inflation? Yeah, the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. Yeah, that was the one that was fairly recent. Here, had the uh the they had like a green energy one, had a bunch of Ukraine ones, they had uh, infrastructure one. Yeah, I mean. And but and also going back to the midterm, like the reason why this the red wave not happening is crazy, is because Biden is polling at like forty three percent, and in states he's really polling at forty three forty three percent approval rate. Really, and sixty five percent say that the economy is not on track. So it's like all the, these people, everyone is unanimously saying. We don't like Biden. Yet the Democrats, like, they're actually, they performed, this was a win for them, this midterm. This was a win. They were expecting to get annihilated. But they're flipping seats in their favor. And Biden, and and another thing that's clear, Biden is totally going to be the nominee for 2024 after because he's just basically going to he's going to go out there and say like hurrah like what I've been doing is working and like you know like this is how close we were to like it could have been a lot worse folks oh but this is how close we are to our democracy getting destroyed he's just going to keep doubling down on what he's doing and look barring no major I know everyone jokes saying like Biden's like not alive like he's not a sentient human being like Unless he seriously dies, he's gonna be the nominee. Yeah. Because, like, like, who else? Who else? You can't remove Biden from this equation. He's basically like the puppet, essentially. Who else? Maybe Nixon. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but like, yeah, like it's. But like, then again, but then again, who, who's gonna who's gonna go on the right? I think it has to be DeSantis. All right, one big win for all right tonight or last night was a loss, net loss for Republicans. But the the big silver lining was Florida. Florida is a bright red state. It went from being a fairly purple state, everyone in 2020 being thinking it was going to be a toss up, mm. to literally being a bright red state. Let's see. Hold on. Let me pull up. Uh, Florida, the Florida race, DeSantis won, or, all right, so Marco Rubio for Senate won by 57%, with Dennings at Democrat 41%. That's a, that's pretty, a big win that's in big politics. Win, yeah. And Ron DeSantis was 58%, to fo- like 58.8% to 45%. That's a huge win from purple. That's up 13 points. Yeah. And, dude, I feel like like a, the one thing that you got to say close. is like he did a really good job with Florida. And this is Ron DeSantis we're talking about. Ron DeSantis is a guy who's not afraid to stand up and actually fight the culture war. But at the same time, he's a seasoned politician that gets stuff done. In Hurricane Ian, he was actually willing to work with President Biden, get stuff done, he built he rebuilt a bridge in three days wow. in Florida. Like n- you can't say anything bad about this guy, really. Unless you're a rabid leftist who, you know, disapproves of teaching kids gender ideology at age seven. Then you disapprove of him. But I mean, yeah. It, Florida is a total red state now. So that's good news. Everything other than that was pretty much a, like really bad for Republicans. Yeah. I mean, Arizona is like a border state, Nevada, all these places hate Biden. These are states where the border crisis is right on their front doorstep. Yet right. these are states that Nevada or no, Arizona, uh, Blake Masters, a Trump backed senator, is getting shellacked. And this guy is like an ultra MAGA guy. He's like a super into like, you know, saying, you know, the 2020 election was fishy. You know, Trump is just basically asking all of his backed senators 
like J.D. Vance from Ohio, Blake Masters in Arizona, like I said, Mohamed Oz in Pennsylvania who lost to the stroke victim. Like, he's basically saying, my bidding. He's like Palpatine. Before. Yeah. Deny the election. Well, he kind of basically, became like the leader of the Republican Party in a way, right? Who? But, Trump? Uh, Trump, yeah. Like, sort of, like, yeah. If, all right, so if you think that Trump is the leader, then guess what? If he's the leader and this happened, this failure, that's on Trump. That's on Trump. Right. If your team in, a, in sports, Ben Shapiro said this on his show, so this comes directly from Ben. Okay. If your sports team is pretty good on, uh, pretty good on paper, has a good roster, but they do badly, who do you blame? You blame the coach, usually. Right. You know? If you have a bad season, usually the coaches or people in management get fired. You know what? Trump, a lot of this was on you. Because he's basically going out there and saying, like, if you, if you guys didn't, if you guys heard and spread the word that the election was a, was a hoax, 2020 was the most unfair election, you know, it's like, people don't just care about that. And guess what? Trump is making it about himself at this point. Yeah. Because in 2016, his big thing was like, I am going to go into Washington and I am just going to be a bullet sponge because all these people, they, they hate me, but most importantly, they hate you. They hate everything you believe in. And I'm the only person willing to get up there and stand in the way of all of those politicians that fucking want to do things in Washington that you fucking hate. And so he went up there, and for four years, he had a pretty solid freaking run. And everyone, everyone in the establishment hated him. But yet, you know, we got him in. Like, people, like, dude, people across the world, like, in Europe, like, it is crazy to see a person like Trump, who's like a businessman, go from being, like, you know, this, like, business guy to the president of the United States. Yeah. That's unprecedented in the entire world. Like, in 2016, America went fucking crazy by, do- by electing Donald Trump. Like, no matter how you look at it. Well, yeah, dude. He's the guy from, what, what was the show that he was on? The Apprentice? The Apprentice? Yeah, I mean, you're fired. Yeah. Look, uh, you know, like... countries have, I mean, this isn't the first celebrity the United States elected. Ronald Reagan was a TV star. Not oh, on the true. level of Trump. And also, Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukraine president, was a comedian, actually. Uh, he was on like oh, the shit, equivalent really? of like Ukrainian Saturday Night Live, basically. Well, bro, did you have you heard about what just happened in Brazil with the election? Yeah, Bolsonaro lost. Yeah, but uh, the guy that he lost to Lula. Yeah, dude, the guy was just in jail for corruption. Really? Yeah. How did he get elected? You know what's crazy? Uh, whatever his first name, Bolsonaro was on Ben Shapiro. Really? Yeah, he was on the Ben Shapiro show. Wow. Right? On the you Sunday know, special. You know, that's really interesting. And I think it's a really interesting time to compare Brazil and the U.S. Because Bolsonaro is very similar. Like, he's very similarly viewed in Brazil as Trump is viewed here. I know the left in America hates Bolsonaro. Yes. They hate him Bo- for, the environmentalists hate him. Because he was big on, like, putting down the Amazon. Well, yeah, but, like, he's, like, viewed in a very similar sense to Trump. Yeah. Like, in the sense that he's just, like, I don't know, this guy that, like, he says wild shit and, like... Like, know, just... in what ways, though, other than, you know, like, what he's done? Have you nah, really not kept off the top of my head, to be, to be honest with you. I just know that he's viewed in that way. I know Brazil also has a very corrupt political system. Very entwined with the military, apparently. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. They kind of disappear people sometimes. But I think, like, the reason you don't really hear about it is because they're not really as, like, big a country as China. But, dude, if, if Brazil had, like, a good government, like, they could legitimately... I mean, the whole, con- the whole continent of South America, really, is just begging for, like, a democratic state. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's just, dude, like, it's very, like, resourceful. Extremely resource-rich. I mean, you know, 
they're relatively like protected. I mean, like they just wanted to like they could just you know just stop with kind of all the communism and all the corruption. Trade with the U.S. and Andy. But honestly, out of all the places, South America got raped like the hardest during the. Yeah, yeah, I. No. I agree. Yeah. I took a history lesson. I heard, took a history class in college called uh, Salt to Cocaine. Yeah, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah. Like, it's a super cool class. Mount Potosi in Brazil mm. is like one of the most notorious silver mines on Earth. It was like wow. this big mountain that the Spanish found. And it like, well, I think, I mean, I, I think uh, local tribes found it first. But, yeah, and they just, but they just but ran Spain it. just went in, like, ran it brown, like, went nuts. And like, you go to Spain today and like, all this like, silver and like the churches and stuff and like, like they still have it. And like, I mean, stuff's like, that's all from like, all from like, literally halfway across. Yeah, dude, it's... It's nuts to think about. It's nuts to think about. And it's a shame and because I feel like a lot of a lot of South American countries are extremely dangerous. Yeah. I mean, you've told me if you take out your iPhone in Brazil, like you're just gonna get robbed. Yeah, you just have like a target on your back, dude. It's it's weird. It's weird. Uh yeah, it is unfortunate. You know, but you just gotta know how to act. You know, it's 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 just different. It's just a different place. You know, that's the biggest thing. What do you think would, like, have to happen for Brazil to, like, a meaningful change? I think they gotta get the corruption under control. Um, do you think the guy who got elected is more corrupt than Bolsonaro, or no? I mean, dude, he was... He, he was he in was, jail. Yeah, he was yeah, just in so, jail for it. I guess. He's Up just in jail decide. for it. <laughs> You know what I mean? So wait, what was he in jail for? I think it was corruption, like legitimate like, corruption. He get elected. Why was he even on the ballot then? I have no idea. I have no idea. It's just crazy, dude. It's just crazy. I mean, this is like coming from what my dad. Is it a me. president in Brazil or? Uh, the president, I think. Yeah. President. Yeah. Look up like Lula corruption. Yeah, L U L A corruption. Ex president. All right, that's old news. Yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe maybe it wasn't just like maybe he just got out or like got out recently or something. So he's a leftist. That is leftist formal president for our former. I mean, I'm just like kind of glossing over. I don't know. Really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's 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 what we can do. But there's protests apparently going on right now. Yeah, dude, it's it's uh, it's not very good in Brazil. I was talking to my cousin, and she said it's like it's been just nuts during election season. It's just been nuts. Yeah. And dude, like you know, Br- Brazilian people, they're they're uh, they're wild. You know what I mean? Is there like a lot of riots going on? No, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't say like riots. I don't really know anything about that. Just I know that they're just you know, they're wild people. Like you ever seen what carnival looks like? Okay, so here we go. Brazil's ex president Lula was sentenced to nearly ten years in prison for corruption. It was apparently. For colluding with an oil company? Huh. So. Sorry. No, no, no. No, no. You know. Read it and assess. So he benefited from 590,000 euros in bribes. From construction company called OAS, the prosecution alleged 
for Seaside Duplex Complex. So apparently this guy took a bunch of bribes. Another 530,000 bribe. Picking up bags of cash from this oil company here for another million euros. Okay, so this guy was basically like Hunter Biden in Ukraine, basically, and China, just picking up bags of cash across the world. Yep. Yeah, so, <laughs> dude, like, but guess what? He's the president of Brazil. He's the president, baby. And you want to know, you know, actually, no, some, you you know, know actually something that I think is pretty Life interesting? Life like a sandwich. Bread come first, no matter how you flip it. You, you want to know something interesting? I actually probably have to pay a fine somewhat what? soon. For what? In Brazil. For what? Uh, so interestingly, um, I actually want to get your take on this. Um, in Brazil, you have to vote, and you have to pay a fine. Oh, and you're a citizen, right? Because you're a dual citizen. Yeah, I've been a citizen since I was like, I think like six or some shit, maybe two. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's been a while. I've been a citizen for a while. Like, for example, when I was eighteen, um, in Brazil, there's mandatory um service. Yeah. So when I turned eighteen, I have to like I had to like provide documents saying like I lived in the U.S. So that way I like didn't have to serve. Okay. How do you feel about that? Like a man mandating voting. Mandating voting. You get voting. fine. Like what if in America, you got fine? Like, like I you know I I think honestly it's not a bad idea. Yeah. No. I think I think it's an incentive to. Make so like like because you're not really especially if you make it like like if you don't make it outrageous mm-hmm. like you should not have to pay like but know. it's also like so pointless the government it's just stuff like that doesn't really happen well do you, well but but, but 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 do you think voting is important no voting's super important yeah but I also think brushing your teeth is important government should yeah okay. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying, but I feel like all like I feel like those two things are obviously very obviously different. Yeah, very different because one is directly tied to the government, yeah. and one is just completely right. not tied to the government. It's right. it's tied to your personal health, right? But also, like you know, I do we really need everyone to vote in America? That's the thing, like. Think about how long it takes for election results to come out. Imagine if you add like 66% more ballots to the equation. And especially like, we already have the conversation about like how like people can kind of just like, like, oh, I know my grandma's email. I know she's not, I know my grandma's address. Hey yeah. grandma, let me see your wallet real quick. But but I feel like honestly though, I feel like there's like such a better way to do this than but, the way that we're doing yeah. it right now to vote. But you know honestly, I mean? like, why, yeah. like dude, yeah. like why are we utilizing voter voting? turnout is a problem. But like why are we utilizing like voting online, for example? Yeah, it's true. I guess cuz people are talking about like voter safety stuff like that. But honestly, like I'm not down with this whole narrative. Like, like I'm down to prevent stuff. Like, like uh, things like I think that everyone should require ID. You know what I mean? Everyone needs an ID. It's ridiculous to think that you're a United States citizen. Everyone has a fucking ID. Yeah. If like you're over why? 18, yeah, you like need why? an ID to vote. Yeah, like why? And then it's like, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's like why, why? Yeah, like, why, why shouldn't there be an idea? Well, and then Democrats make the argument, because apparently, like, they're mad about that, and they're saying, well, some, like, you know, African-American people in the inner city, like, they don't have the resources, that they don't have the time to get an ID. It's like, what? Everyone has an, everyone gets an ID, dude. Like, are you really saying that black people are too dumb to know how to get an ID? Like, that's pretty racist. Yeah, it's like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's just like, so why, like, why, why I can listen, listen like, but like, like what, what kind of ID, right? We're talking like a driver's license. Like a driver's so, license. Like, like what, what, what if you live, live in, for example, like New York City? 
Right. And you just don't, don't have, have a driver's, driver's license. You don't need to drive. Your parents don't drive. You have, like, a bus license. You have, like, a bus token. Like, any form of U.S. ID. Well, a social security number. Social security number. But how can they verify that to you if it doesn't have, like, a picture, for example? They don't need that. Social security number is linked to you, like, directly. Yeah, and I guess it'd be a pretty serious offense if you use yeah. somebody else's. Yeah, a felony at that. Yeah. Dude, Dude like, like, what, what about, about, um... Like, what, what about... Birth certificate you could use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what about, about, um... I think. Have you, uh... Or you could just get one. It's not hard. Like, there's DMVs everywhere. Like, yeah, it's, it's not, not but it it's is, very hard. it's important to get an ID, I, I, like, an ID. Yeah, and so honestly, yeah. if, like, I don't, I'm sorry if I keep cutting, but if people, if the narrative is too many black people don't have IDs, then why aren't the Democrats saying, let's work as hard as we can to get all these people IDs? I right. mean, there's a long time from now until 2024, you got two fucking years. Let's get that done then. Yeah. But no one's talking about that. Heck, why would they want them to get IDs? Why would we encourage, like, people, you know, like, I, I don't even, honestly, I don't even understand the motive. No, I don't either. I, like, that's, like, I'm pretty left-leaning, and I think that's where, um, like, with my views, and I think that's where we kind of, um, we kind of, uh, differ. Yeah. Right? But I would, um, I don't know, dude. I just, like... My problem with the Democratic Party is they, they, it's just like, especially the far left, like some of it's just, just becomes so ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and um, I don't want to get too, too far into that, but I want to, I want, I want to bring up the idea. Have you, uh, have you seen the movie The Irishman? You haven't seen it. It's like, it's really long. I heard it was like only me. Really, I thought it was really good. Okay. I thought it was really well done. They did it over, like, I think, like, 10 years. I thought it was a pretty well done movie. Um, and it talks about, like, it's like a mob movie. Yeah, I know. Like, it's a Robert team. Yeah, but in, uh, do you mind if I, like, talk about parts of the movie? Sure, I don't care. All right, so there's, like, a part of the movie where basically, um, because I think it follows a book that, because, like, there was an actual guy. Like, the movie's based off, like, a real guy. Oh. Uh-huh. I think he wrote a book and basically he's like arguing in the book that the mob kind of helped shape the election for JFK in one of the states by they would like literally go to um, graveyards and they would find people who like recently died and they would go over to the um, like to the polling places because obviously this is like probably what like the 60s right right. So, so like, like they, they would go, go to the polling places. stations and since like they didn't really have a way to verify, they, they just had like a list of people who like lived in the area. Right. They'd just be like, oh, I'm this person. And then they would go in and like vote for JFK. People did that all the time. Back especially back in like New York, back in like Like Civil War era. Yeah. Like people would just fucking like, like gangs would go around to people but it can like put guns. And just, you're coming. Holes. <laughs> <laughs> they would stick a gun in your face and just go, you're going to vote today, boy. Yeah. Listen, dude, like, that's, that's, that's one thing that I, I think people have to understand, right? Mm-hmm. Is like, the, the age that we live in, although, yes, right? Obviously, there's horrible shit going on in the world, mm-hmm. right? But, but I think one thing, thing needs to be said and one thing needs to be clear. What? We, we probably live... live in the best time to be a human being. Oh, as far as being like dude. peaceful. Totally. Right? Like, like dude, imagine being like um well, like, not like, peaceful, but like just quality of life. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well like I would say peaceful. I don't know. Things are getting pretty not peaceful pretty quick. Okay, but like think about this, right? Think about this. Say say you lived in Asia during the time of Genghis Khan. No, I know. I know, I know what I mean. You know what I mean? Like, dude, you legitimately had to worry that like one day, the Mongolians would just come in, yeah. riding on horseback, and guess what? Everyone you know, everything you love, your entire village was killed, tortured, and... Or being in like, the Aztec Empire, you could get, like, sacrificed at any moment. Yeah! Or, like, do, like, the Salem Witch Trials. Oh, yeah. Imagine just being a girl. Like, okay. 
witch. Mm. She's a witch. I Stop saw her before. Wait, Imagine what? what? You're yeah. like, bro, what? I just used my left hand. Yeah, yeah dude, dude. Like, dude. Like, but I'm saying, like, you know, like, yes, yes like, like, there's horrible shit going on, and you know, there's things that are going on in the world that I don't agree with. But, but like, dude, like, it's it's pretty it's pretty good to be a human right now, like, especially in, in America, like. And like, like I was talking to my dad, dad like the other day, and you know, um, he was he was explaining to me. He's like, dude, like you still gotta understand, like this is an amazing country to live in. Yeah, regardless, regardless of all of this shit that's going on. No, yeah, I know. Compared yeah, to yeah. other countries, it's like. But I think like, especially if you if you pay attention to history, you know, like if if sometimes those times don't always last. Yeah, like, we are, we live obviously in an unprecedented time but i mean do like greece fell greece Rome fell, fell. Rome fell. i'm not saying like like you know I'm not saying like america's on the cusp of downfall i think the world is headed towards pretty uncertain times especially with all the deaths yes. everyone I think the debt that everyone has is really interesting. I think the everyone world power is going. Like, dude, like, I think it's really interesting about where China is. Yeah. I think China is in a really interesting spot. I think they're going to collapse. Yeah, because they have, they have a lot of money. Well, they, like, they control a lot of, like, trade and stuff like that. Like, you know, they make a lot of computer chips there. They make, uh, they control, I, I've heard at least that they control a lot of, um, the mines that collect the precious resources that, um, like go into the, the computer components and chips and stuff really? like that. Okay. Right? Which is pretty interesting. Yeah. But it's like, dude, like, have you like I think they I think they they're gonna have like a real estate collapse soon, right? Yeah, like, that's the big problem because the, the China has just been building nonstop since like five, right? And they've been overbuilding. You can go through some areas in Chinese cities where there are like giant skyscrapers that are just. Vacant. There's no one in them. Right. They just keep building and building. And they keep building because their housing market is by far, like, their hottest. It's been their hottest market. And, like, owning a house in China is, like, seen as, like, a really big status. Right. Like, I don't know. Uh, there's just not enough people, though, for the amount of houses. And people's, like, land value is going down. And also, people don't... But because people don't technically own the houses themselves, the state owns it. Right. It means that the state's economy is directly linked to the housing market. So, let's say that China goes through, like, a 2008-type housing collapse. Like, their economy is directly linked to the housing market. Yeah, and wasn't there something with, like... They were like basically loaning out mm -hmm. um, money to like build like apartment other complexes and like the other countries. They were basically giving out money for their Belt and Road Initiative, which is basically a land-based transportation project that'll stretch from like China all the way to to Italy. Wow. Or maybe Turkey. I think. Wow. Turkey. Um. And it's gonna, you know, it involves, you know, railroads, uh, fucking seaports, hotels and stuff, ports and whatever, you know. Um, and they've just been pouring billions and I think it's been actually like trillions of dollars over the course of a decade into countries in Africa. Wow. Sri Lanka, near India, Vietnam. Indonesia, but the problem is, like, because they are directly controlled by the government from the top down, a lot of these projects have been, like, poorly managed because there's so many of them. 
which mm. has caused a lot of these projects to like not be profitable. Like I'll take Sri Lanka for example. Sri Lanka is this tiny nation off of India, off the southern tip of India, and they uh, were given a loan by China to pay to to build like a giant green tower. I guess it's like a hotel. Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this giant green fucking tower, and there's yeah. nothing around it, and it costs like ninety billion dollars. Yeah, and it's just and after there. A, yeah, it's just there, right? Not making money. There's no one in it. It's just there. Yeah. After like five years or something, Sri Lanka's like, this isn't making money. We have to default on our loan, dude. We have to default on our debt. And then all these countries in like Africa, it's like the same thing. Like whether it's the local engineers like not really being able to like get the workers, you know, they need to like do the project or like top down authorities from China mismanaging the project could be a little bit of both. Mm. But like all these projects profitable. And all these countries are now defaulting on their debt, defaulting on their loans. Yeah. Well dude, dude I, I feel like, like if China goes into a really bad recession or depression. It's bad for the whole world. It's because bad they the make world. all our shit. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like it's gonna be really bad. Like and and also, China's dealing with problems on that front too, because now there's budding countries like India and like Malaysia who are now becoming like they're undercutting them in terms of prices because their countries are now just now like they're in the beginning of industrialization mm. and China's now kind of like in the middle stages, which means that they're having a bigger middle class, which means that the lower people the, the the lower class people who were the you know shop workers sweatshop workers fucking Nike sneaker makers are like moving up and demanding better jobs and better wages and stuff so it's harder dude, to compete dude I don't know I I have I think I saw it on Instagram right um because I follow a bunch of these like uh like pop culture kind of Instagram accounts. They post some really cool shit, honestly. Like, yeah. like from time to time, like they post some shit where I see it and I'm like, holy shit, like that's really cool. And one of the things that I remember seeing was I think it was a China based thing, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe like Hong Kong. Is that China? Uh, well, it used to not be China. But in 20... So, yeah, I mean, it's like one of those like really densely populated cities. Yeah. Like ridiculously densely populated. Could have been like Shanghai or Yeah, it was like one of those like Beijing. Maybe it was Beijing. Maybe it was Beijing. Shanghai is like their most notable city. The one with like the space needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But know. like but like regardless, right? And, but it was like this uh this whole subculture apparently of people who like live in like literal boxes. Yeah. It's called I think like Taipei or so, or not, not yeah. Taipei. It's like it's something like lay low. Like it means lay low. Yeah, dude. But like I'm talking like the people literally live in a box. They live with nothing. This, yeah, yeah. It's like a like a box like the size like maybe from like you or from, from like me to like the end oh, wait, of the couch. But are you just talking about like the condition people live? Yeah, 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 like exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. It's and they like crazy. live like in between like the big buildings. Yeah, like because some people literally can't afford houses in the buildings or, or the apartments in the buildings. They'll live like in between the apartment buildings. Yeah, in like slit community, and they'll like live in between where like all the apartment buildings like join basically. And it's, like, the craziest fucking thing. And they call it the slits because, like, when you look up, all you can see in terms of the sky is, like, really just, like, this little, like, a slit. That's all you see. And the rest is just, like, cables and shit. Jesus, dude. It, it's gotta be a fucking nuts, nuts world. But to kind of, like, s- switch it into a little bit of a lighter, um, lighter kind of thing. If you, if you had to visit... Any country in Europe? In Europe? or Yeah, where would you okay. go? In Europe? There's a lot of places I would want to go in Europe. 
I know it's a, it's a really tough one. It would dude. be interesting to visit Rome. Yep, I think just so too. Because it's like so old and. You know. Would you Would you go to the Vatican? Yeah, I would go to the Vatican. I yeah. would do everywhere in Rome. Yeah, the Colosseum. You know, do Rome, go up to Venice and hit the Vatican. Do hit Naples, hit Sicily. Ooh, you know, well, that's Italy at that point. That's right? the island off of it. Still Italy. No, no, no. I'm saying Italy is Rome. Tech. Well, Rome is in Italy, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you, you'd want to visit Italy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Italy, Italy, dude, yeah. Italy, Italy. Dude, I hear Italy is just like gorgeous. I hear mm-hmm. Switzerland. I've been to Switzerland. Really? Just, uh, well, oh, okay. So yeah, you don't so really It doesn't really count. You don't really remember but, it. Yeah. Well, no, I remember a little bit. Okay. Did a lot of cool stuff. But yeah, kind of doesn't really count. But. Uh, I would also like to visit London. Oh, dude, I think London would really be so Really jealous cool. of one of our friends for going there. I know, you know what I'm right? talking about. Yeah, dude, yeah, and he had a ball there. Mm-hmm. I think London would be fucking so cool, because, dude, like, there's so much history in London, too. There really is. And it's also, like, it, it's, there's so much to do, too, in terms, like, pubs. Yeah, yeah. People like to fucking rag, alright, I'm gonna say something. British people get too much shit, you know. What? Why? Because there's a lot that? of memes, like you know. Well, at least our schools aren't Call of Duty. Like you know <laughs> that shit. Yeah. At least we have cares. Which is cringe. They actually have. But like, dude, like I would love to have like a sausage roll in London. A sausage roll is the equivalent. A sausage roll is just basically like a giant pig in a blanket. Ooh. Like you're thinking about. No, no, I was just, I was just responding to someone. Yeah, a nice sausage, sausage roll. roll. English people, like particularly Irish people and English people, uh-huh. know how to do. Yeah, and dude, you know what? You know what I would do too. You got to do fish and chips. Fish and chips is given. Yeah, but dude, it's my breakfast. Favorite food. Hell yeah, breakfast, do some tea. Getting a full English. Some tea. Yeah. Bro, do you know where I gotta take you? You ever been to Simpson and Vale? Is it Brookfield? Dude. Well, you like tea, right? You're big into tea? I wouldn't say I'm big into tea, but there's some teas that I enjoy. Okay, so let me let me put it this way. Would you like to get more into tea? So there's a place in Brookfield called Simpson and Vale. Uh, there's a guy who runs with my dad who owns it. Dude, it's essentially this huge like tea shop. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I you, feel like if I saw it, I would be like, oh. I'm... It it's kind of hidden, so I don't know. If, I don't know. Oh really? Yeah, it's a little hidden. It's a little hidden. Um, but dude, like you walk in there and it's really cool. But you have to buy one of those like um. It was like metal balls because you like it, it's not like uh tea bags like they don't sell tea bags oh the cages like the metal cage things that you put the tea in yes yeah i've used those before yeah yeah, yeah. so they have like but they have like the actual tea like yeah not tea bags yeah, like no. you put it in, i like, totally little... know what you're talking about. yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, you, yeah. So, but like dude we should go there and like shop for some tea okay because yeah. i think it'd be really cool because i've been really getting into tea recently Nice. Yeah. What's your What's your go to tea? I think we talked about. All it right. I like ginseng is my favorite. Yeah. I like uh, lemon. I don't know. Stuff with lemon in it. Uh-huh. Chamomile. Fire. Ooh, okay. Green tea also got yeah. put up there. And I guess like. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, like, do you, how do you usually, like, do your tea? Do you usually just do hot water and tea bag? or? Nah. Yeah. Dude, so this, this is what I usually do. I usually put just enough honey to cover, like, the bottom of the cup. I just go off. Some mornings. And mornings. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you. Know, like, sometimes I'll make, like, a black coffee just. Uh-huh. Cause I'll get it cap. And then like, 
Yeah, so it's just because I want. Better. Yeah, I feel you. Strong team, but if it's chamomile tea or like the sleepy time. Uh, Personally, it doesn't make me any sleepier, but sometimes it helps me down. Yeah, dude, like, I think sleepy time tea is a great thing right before bed. I think tea in general is a great thing right before bed, just because, like, you, like you know, what, uh, you know what I mean when I say, like, soup belly? Soup belly? Yeah. Like, you know, you like ever, maybe a little. Like, you ever, you ever eat in, like, soup for dinner, for yeah. example, mm-hmm. and you have that feeling where you're, like, your stomach's yeah, full, and it's yeah, kind of, like, yeah, full yeah. of water, but yeah. it's, like, warm. You know um, what I mean? Are you a soup guy? Depends on the soup. You know what? Uh, you know what was one of my favorite soups that I had when I was really sick at school. You ever had like broccoli cheddar soup? Broccoli cheddar is a. What? I know that's a very big popular. I just can't compromise. Dude, even when it's completely smothered in cheddar cheese. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I like asparagus and. I'll- uh, uh, fair enough. But like a vegetable soup, like with carrots and like green onions in it, love that. Ooh, yeah, or like a chicken noodle. Yeah, chicken, chicken noodle, noodles, great. Chicken noodle, awesome. Uh, I'm trying to think about like what other soups. I don't know. I don't know what other soups I would. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a huge soup guy. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, usually at least. Unless I'm really, really feeling it, and I don't think this is that's ever happened in my life. But like, I I would never like seek out and go get soup. Yeah, you know what I mean. Maybe there will come a day, you know, super tight budget. And I'm like, gotta go. Yeah, you know, but like, I would rather like if I'm on a super tight budget, I would honestly probably probably rather have something like ramen. Yeah, like, ramen's just unbeatable for price, dude. Like, Elon Musk said, like, like, sometimes, this is the thing, like, I get it, if you're, like, a mother, or you have tons of other expenses. Right. Like, if you're, like, a person, you can literally. For food. If you just went with, like, ramen noodles. Yeah, ramen noodles, eggs. Ramen noodles, eggs, and like you maybe know, like frozen water. vegetables. Like you could buy like yeah, like like even if you didn't want vegetables, you could survive. Like Elon Musk said, like there was one point when where he was creating PayPal with his brother. Yeah. Or like he was coding, like his brother would literally spend like nothing on, it. just eat like ramen noodles. Yeah. Dude, have you ever have you ever done ramen noodles? But you put like an egg. Egg. I've not done the egg. I've just never done it. But I... no, 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 it's I've not even... had ramen with it. It's, it's not, not even. even it's not even that much of a of a difference. So what I'd usually do, right? So this is what I'd usually do. I I would uh, cook up the ramen, right? And then I would take it out about like fifteen seconds earlier okay. than I usually would. Drain it out. Get a hot pan, maybe put some, like, olive oil, avocado oil, whatever you want to put on it, right? Oh, so you cook the egg? No. Like, afterwards? Not really. So, so let me finish. So, then I'll, I'll throw the ramen into the pan, right? And then I'll throw, like, two eggs over it. And I'll just mix it all together. Okay. Until, like, the eggs kind of become, like, a little solid. And then I'll take it out. Not bad. Or like, dude, like you can even, you know, it's like an even probably an even cheaper meal if you make it on scale. If you do something like, uh, you buy a couple pounds of chicken, right? Like you buy like those like big um packs of chicken where like the chicken's really cheap. Like chicken breasts. Yeah, like chicken breasts, chicken thighs. I personally chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. I like chicken thighs. I bought chicken thighs. You can Yeah. Shop and shop. Yeah, dude, dude chicken, chicken, dude, chicken thighs. thighs. I don't remember the price particularly, but 
What you do you like? You buy like a big thing of chicken thighs, right? And then what you do is you uh, you make like a big batch of rice. Um, maybe if you, if you have like a pressure cooker, this is honestly what my dad does, right? So you take a pressure cooker, you make some rice. You know, you put some water in it. You put some chicken. You know, maybe some like chicken broth or like chicken, uh, you know, like that type of shit in it. That is amazing. And then you just like, yes. yeah, bro, you just cook it all together. And then, you know, you have like pretty tender chicken. You got Probably pretty... have leftovers too. Yeah. Especially no, that, when, you buy, when you buy like bulk. Like... Yeah, yeah, that's the point. So you, you, get, like, like, big, you do like a big pot and then you just like, you know, throw it in the fridge. And then like, you know, you got meals for like the next like four days. Easy. I'm thinking about doing that. Like going to the store. I'm making it. Uh, all, like, just, dude, you know, a week worth of. You know what you should do? You should look on YouTube and find like meal. Yeah, I, I know. There's like. Yeah, yeah. dude. It's like, I, I hear it's like, honestly, like the most like money efficient way. Yeah. I believe it. You know, you just, and like, dude, like the best part about it is like, you just spend like, you buy a bunch of Tupperware and mm-hmm. then you spend like one day a yeah, week just cooking. Tupperware. Just meat. Well, if you buy in bulk, like, yeah, but like, then you just go and you don't need meat. Yeah, no, nah. buy in bulk. Yeah, so you just like you just like spend one day a week cooking, right? You cook all like like you know yeah. two hours. You just cook a bunch of, a bunch of shit. Probably cook it in week. Probably like cook like half a week's worth. Yeah, I don't know about I, I don't know about you, but I like genuinely, just to maximize freshness. Yeah, I honestly genuinely really like cooking. I don't like really. I I like watch. I like watch. Uh uh-huh. yeah. Okay. Like, I like cooking, but like it can be annoying. It is annoying. Like, I know why people don't cook, especially when yes, when it comes to food, when you're hungry. Especially when you're hungry. For me, I don't eat, honestly, unless I'm, like, really. Yeah. It's, like, kind of weird. Yeah. Like, this is bad, but it's, for me, I just, I only eat when I'm, like, okay, I'm fucking starving. Yeah. I, I guess it's just because I'm a lazy sack of shit, but yeah. And at that point, when you're, like, starving, you're, like, right, easiest thing that I can eat. That's, like. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, it's, like. Billy cheesesteak. Give it a papa. Two minutes. Let it cool down for a couple minutes. I'm I'm eating it. Yeah, you eat like one or two. You know it's a good like tactic good for... with the hot pockets. Huh. Put in two for four minutes and Yep. Yeah, dude, like I think hot po- I I like dude, you know what I honestly made the other I went to the dollar store and I got this like frozen pizza. Five bucks. What was the brand? Red Baron. Red Baron is a. F- yeah, I think so. I like That's the insane. I had the Dollar General by a uh, OG smoking CBD. Yeah. I think it was like five, six bucks, something really? like that. Is that place? Yeah. I never thought that. Yeah, dude. Low key, dollar like Dollar General like dollar stores like that, dude. Like, you can get some, like, really good low-key shopping there. Yeah. Like, if you're going for, like, chips. Yeah. You might as well go there. If you're going for, like, Gatorade, shit like that, you might as well go there. Fairly close to you. Well, like, just in general, dude. Like, just to save money. Me? Yeah. Dude, mobile things. Dude, everything, everything, dude. dude like a uh, one of the so, so usually insane, usually man. if I go for a long drive, you know this actually. Usually if I go for a long drive, I'll get a like some sort of energy drink to sip on. And my favorite, my go to is the tall 20, 20 ounce, um, sugar free Red Bull. Right, dude. At Mobile, it's like six bucks. If I go, if I go to the, if I go to the gas station right before uh, yeah. to get on the highway the in Newtown, yeah, the Hollywood one, it's like 
70 cents cheaper. It's like 5.29, 5.39. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, it's like it's like damn, dude. Like like at that point that's like a pretty big price hike. You know, it's like almost yeah. like 50%. It's just that's a thing. Well, that's the thing too. Is like, is it worth it with the gas? Definitely well, no. well, that that's the thing. It's like depends. For me, it's definitely. It depends. It depends, because for you, yeah, it probably is because right there. you can just get on seven and then get on the highway yeah. right from there. But for me, yeah. it's smarter for me. It's like kind of easier for me to drive that way. And just get on 84 rather than go through like all those lights. I just take the light at Rite Aid. But you know, when I'm going to like you, yeah. I prefer the exit. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because usually when I take a long drive, yeah. I'm going from that exit. Unless I'm going to, if I'm going down to Stanford, I'll just go straight and I'll usually stop at the Sitco. Yeah. That's like right next to my house. You know, so I don't know. I think it depends where you're lifting off from and where you're going. Yeah, but I refuse to get gas at mobile or four corners in general. I think it's just yes, dude. It's ridiculous, dude. It's always at least like thirty cents more expensive. I know. Again, it's not, it's not bro. thirty cents. Like. Okay, but like if you're getting like twelve gallons, dude, that's like that's like an extra like two bucks you're paying every time you fill up. For me, again, just me. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. I'm going. Dude, it's yeah, you're past a it. stop. So it's like for me, gassing up at mobile is just always gonna be Okay, but like let me ask you this, right? Let me ask you this. Give you a hypothetical. Can I give you a hypothetical? So let's say you're going to UConn. You prefer yes. to go to the exit nine. Yes, I always go that way. Right, just because great shot. Right, it's easy. Easy money. You usually Phoenix. get off that way too, right? Yeah. Right. Yep. So let's say you're not super low on gas. You got let's say a quarter of the tank, mm -hmm. and you go. Ah. I couldn't make it. Of course, that's what I'm saying, though, yeah. right? That's yeah. what I'm saying. You have enough gas okay. to maybe get I'm there. just also thinking me. Yeah, yeah, but, like, you don't, you okay. don't, have, you don't, yeah. you don't have enough gas to get there. Right. But, like, you know, or you have enough gas to get there, but it's close. Like, it's close, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you, I would you, probably want to stop. You'd probably want to stop I, to get gas. Yeah, yeah. Would you stop at mobile, where it's, let's say, 20 cents more expensive? What you mean, like... When you we'll stop where though? Like, am I, I'm going to Yukon. Look, like you're going to Yukon. Yeah, but you have to stop to get gas regardless. Right. Are you gonna stop at Mobile, where it's twenty cents more expensive, or Hollywood? Yeah, I'll less stop expensive. there. Yeah, totally. I haven't gone up to Yukon, and that place only opened up. Yeah, maybe like two years. So I haven't really stopped there. To be, yeah, and to be uh, fair, I've stopped there a lot. A lot. Because, like, when I would go back and forth from UConn, because I had a whole ritual, bro. I had a whole ritual. Which it would be, like, I would drive from, I would leave. Honestly, though, I, I should have abused, I, I have not taken admit. I definitely could have gotten gas there, like, times going to UConn. And I, yeah. It's just programmed in my, ba my brain to. Yeah, but, dude, like, my, like, you know, so I had a whole ritual when I would go up to UConn, because, like, you know how I would, like, come home a lot and, like, all that shit. Yeah. So I had this whole, I had this whole ritual, right? So I would, I would, like, leave my dad's, and depending on what, when I was going back up to UConn, I would either go, like, chill with, uh, with, a, um, you know, our boy. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna dr name drop him, but. I would go chill with him for a little bit and you know do do my little thing if you get my if you get my drift 
Or I would just drive straight to Hollyville, right? I would stop at that gas station. I would uh-huh. get gas. I would usually get like an energy drink and, you know, maybe some kind of snack. I would go into the park and ride right next to Hollyville. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. You've told me this. I think I told you this when yeah, we went up to UConn yeah, like, yeah. the, other, the other weekend. But, you know, yeah. Because no, we, we also burned there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, yeah, so then I would just go there, you know, do, like, you know, a couple times, and then just drive right up. Yeah. And just, you know, listen to a podcast. Yeah, that's, that's where... That's the dream. Nice drive. Look right before with a podcast. Yep. Exactly. I'm in heaven, baby. I'm in heaven. Take a short break. Papa's got to piss. Yeah, let's take a short break. We'll be back in a second. Alright. So we're actually gonna we're gonna end it there. Uh, I felt tired. Yeah, we're kinda tired. Uh good talk. Super based. Yes, sir. Good talking to you, Lee. Lots of night. Have a blessed night. We'll see you next week.